arms are so heavy. It's time for another motor build. time all right hello everyone welcome back to wicked works we've got a new friend in the shop this is auto auto is a 1967 uh, beetle convertible as you can see um, auto has recently suffered a rather unfortunate accident um, the nice folks that own auto uh, Dave and Joni uh, had picked this up after a two and a half year stay at a body shop uh, and um, as they were driving at home the tar board behind the engine that was not secured uh, got sucked into the fan shroud and cooked the motor. So we decided to just start fresh. Um, they wanted something, you know, basically stock-ish that had a little bit of power to it so that they could, uh, you know, tear up the back roads and stuff. They're not going to do a lot of highway driving. Um, and so I decided that uh, pretty much the same engine that I built for that yellow 71 Super Beetle last year um, that was part of my engine build series uh, would be more than enough for this particular car. Uh, except we're doing a couple of things just a little bit differently. First of all, we're starting with a brand new case from Autolinea. Um, I just brought this out to uh, my buddy Dave, who's my machinist, to have it checked out and everything looks good. Uh, so there's a couple of new things that I've got to do to that. Um, I also... Um, uh, this is technically going to be a stroker motor. What do you mean technically? Well, uh, when I went to order the crankshaft from CB, the 69 millimeter stro stroke crankshafts that they have uh, were out of stock. But they did have a 69 and a half millimeter stroke crank. That was the same price. That was in stock. So I ordered that. I'm sure you're thinking, why is there even a 69 and a half millimeter stroke crank? It's a good question. Uh, from the factory, the, 60, uh, the 1600s uh, actual displacement is like 1548 or something. And uh, CB decided to go and stroke it a little bit to get you as close to 1600 cc's as possible. I think they only got it to like 1598, but that's still pretty good. Uh, so with the 87 mil uh, 1641 kit and this 69 and a half millimeter crank, that's going to be a 1653. Um, and I'm going to use the SCAT C25 cam again. Uh, I've got stock lifters, stock push rods, and uh, 1 1.1 um, to 1 uh, ratio uh, rocker kit. Um, you know, so I think it's going to be a nice hot little motor, and I'm going to put a stock carb on it uh, from Volksbits because I like his stuff, and it's all warranted. So first things first, uh, I need to get the case uh, set up on a, on a stand so that we can do the bearings. And then when the bearings are done, we can do the crankshaft. So I think the first thing I'm going to do before I get this on uh, the stand, um, I've got to find some, uh, some hardware to actually bolt my head onto it. But also, I want to pull these threaded plugs out. There's one up here and one here in the front because um, these cases come from the factory tap for full flow. Uh, so I want to pull those out. I want to clean everything uh, inside and out, you know, flush the passages, and then uh, put these back in with some sealant on them. Um, so let me take care of that and make sure everything's good, and then we can uh, go ahead and mount this up, um, and we can start uh, fitting the bearings. All right, so I'm getting ready to put uh, the plug back in here, this guy. And we're gonna use some uh, Promtex thread locker. This is, uh, I forgot to read the package, but I know it's good up to 450 degrees. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of juice, maybe. Come on. Oh, 
Okay, well, that'll work. I don't know where I put my ratchet, though. I'm sure everybody has their own sealant that they like to use for certain applications. And I'm sure I'm not using yours, so why don't you just tell me what it is so that I can ignore you and go on our way. So let me do the other one and then uh, I'll put the pins in the saddles here and we can start fitting the bearings. All right, I've got all my pins in here. I'm gonna kind of test the fit of these bearings first before we go and paint them. Make sure that everything feels good. Nice and good. Remember this goes face down with the slot towards the back. Oh yes, very nice. Yeah, okay. And we're gonna take one of the saddles because that's the next one up. Yep. Okay, that's nice. Go to the next one. Should be this guy. Yep. That feels good. And the thrust bearing. Nice. Oh God, it just falls in like butter. Okay, I'm gonna mark the top of these with a paint pen as soon as I figure out where I put said paint pen. Beep, boop, beep, 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 beep. It's gonna stay there. And it's gonna go like that. And we're gonna mark that guy just like that. Okay. All right. All right, okay, so now I'm gonna take these three out and paint the case so that uh, we can set them back in and see uh, if we have any overlap on the passages. I promise all of this is gonna come off. That one's a little bit hard to read, but on these you can see that little mark right there, and that little guy right there. These are lined up very well. So now I can go and douche the hell out of this with brake clean, get all the pink out of here, wash it again, wash the bearings, and then we can start assembling the crank. Try to stand this up in here now. Please. Come on. There we go. All right, let's see if I can get this to Cooperate with me here. Oh, don't pinch me. All right. sure that all the water and stuff is off of here so that we can get ready to put grease in places. I'm also going to pull there these little Allen screws in here that apparently I'm, I need to uh, pull out and clean those passages so I'm going to do that in a moment here. I just want to get all this crap off of here first. All right, so they appear to be a four mil plug. Just gonna yank that out of there. And one on the opposite side. Do you like to look up my nose? I do kinda, I can't tell if that's water or just some shit. But we're gonna blow it out anyway. All right. So I'm gonna, where is it, 
I'm gonna go right there. Okay, I'm just gonna cover that and hope that there's little chunks of metal in there. Okay, <clears throat> so the only thing I'm doing differently with this crank assembly, at least I think the only thing I'm doing differently with this crank assembly is uh, sealing these plugs up. I'm using uh, CB rods this time rather than uh, the AA stuff. Um, I've kind of stopped buying stuff from AA because every time I get something it appears to have a problem and I'm tired of waiting for it to come back. Um, so... I need to check and see if the CB rods are offset or not. If you recall, if you watched my other videos, um, the rods uh, need to go on in a certain orientation when the crank is in a certain position. If the rods are not offset, that doesn't have to happen. All right, it's another day. I've got the uh, crank finished. All the time gears are on, bearings are on rods are on. These CB rods are not offset, um, so you can kind of put them wherever. I just put them with all the CB logos facing up because I like seeing the logos. Uh, so next step uh, is getting the camshaft together, which I've already done. Bolted the gear on uh, with red Loctite and torqued these down to 14 pounds. You know, washed everything and all that. Uh, so now I want to get the cam in, but I have to set the end play for this first. Uh, so I've got to get back in the case. We're gonna start uh, putting the cam bearings in, um, and then we'll set the end play for this, get the crank in, make sure everybody's rotating nice and happy, uh, and then move on to the next thing. So if you watched one of the earlier engine build videos that I did, um, I talked about single and double thrust cam bearings. Um, and I'm really glad that earlier on when I was building that first engine, I mistakenly ordered um, double thrust cam bearings because this case is uh, cut for double thrust bearings. So we've got the shoulder here on the right side of the case with uh, the tang and everything. And it is matched on this side. So the process will be the same as far as I know for setting the end play. I just have to do it twice because I have to do each bearing. So I'm going to do my best to get this as, as close, identical between each two as I can. I might have to use a, um, uh, I don't have a micrometer, but I do have a um, uh, caliper. I wonder if I can use that. Um, so let me uh, find the flattest surface that I have, and uh, we're going to start uh, trying to file these down. And get them, oh, 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 and get them good. Because what's what I'm doing, you can see this shoulder here doesn't quite fit in here. So you've got to very gently sand the sides of these off to kind of get a little bit of a gap in here so that the cam can float. Um, and I think the spec is like two to six thou or something. It's real small, but it's got to be there. Um, so now I've got to do both of these and hope for the best. Uh, yeah. So let me, uh, let me get started on that. Uh, check the axial play shown, blah, 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 blah. Thrust bearing should be, the play permitted by the thrust bearing should be 0.04 to 0.13 millimeters or 0.016, no, 0.0016 to 0051 inch. So where I have it is good. Apparently. According to my Bentley manual. And that is plenty. It feels good to me. So uh, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do the other side now and measure that.
All right, so the crank is in, cam is in, everything's rotating very nicely. Um, next step is gonna be putting the lifters in and getting the other side of the case ready to uh, put together. Um, and there's a couple other things that I've got to do on this side, seals and whatnot, um, and then we can put that together. But I'm not going to do it in this video. I don't have the time, so we're going to have to wait until next week probably to do that. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends. You can follow me on Instagram at WickedWorks, and we'll see you at the next one. Okay, bye.